Okay, so this is the example that I asked for you to try on your very own. So if 23% of all patients with high blood pressure had bad side effects from certain medicine, use the normal approximation to find the probability that among 120, more than 32 will have bad side effects. So we're finding the probability of a binomially distributed random variable is greater than 32. And we want to do a normal approximation, so the first thing that we have to do is do a continuity correction. Now, I've shown, oops, pardon me, I've shown um, a picture over here on the left-hand side where here's our 32 bar, right? It's above the mean, so here's the mean here and above the 32, and it's not including that bar. So we've got to be on this side of the bar, right? So that side of the bar is a half a unit beyond 32. So our normally distributed random variable will start at 32.5. Now our sample size is the 120. Our probability of a success is 0.23, the percentage of patients that have blood uh, with blood pressure, high blood pressure that have bad side effects. The mean that we'll use for a normally distributed random variable will be equivalent to n times p, that's 27.6, and the standard deviation that we will be using for the normally distributed random variable will be the root of n times p times q, which is approximately 4.609989. So I've gone through and I've um, computed that, and I've standardized it, as I've told you over and over again that needs to be done, and the probability that a z is greater than 1.06 is what I come out with. Now if I'm going to look that up on a negative z table, I'm going to be just looking up a tail probability, the probability that z is less than a negative uh, 1.06. So negative 106, here's my one zeros, and then I come over to the 106, and the probability that I get here is 0.1446. So this would be 0.1446. And then if I do that in my same number in my calculator, what I would get, remembering that I would do a normal, and I would be doing a normal CDF, because that's the uh, um, density function, the cumulative density function, and I want to go greater than 1.06, so that means I start out at 1.06, and then I'm going to go up to ne uh, positive infinity, right? This is the left end point, this is where I'm going, and then if I have the new operating system, I have to put in a 0, 1, it's already put in for me. If I have the old operating system, I can just hit return right after I put in the e to the 10th. And then what I get is 0.1445723274, and I round it to four decimal places, and I get the exact same probability that I've gotten right here. So that is another example of our normal approximation to the binomial. Now the next thing that I want to show you is what the sampling distribution for um, the binomial looks like. So the sampling distribution for the binomial is the sampling distribution of p hats. p hats, by the way, looks like p with a little carrot over the top of it. That's red p hat. And it's really hard for me to write p hat in my computer, and I didn't even bother to do it here. Now, p hat is distributed approximately, or the sampling distribution of p hats is distributed approximately normally with the um, probability of success um, being equal to the mean. So p is equal to our mean and our standard deviation is p times q divided by n. So what this is equivalent to, or when we would use this, is when we are seeing percentages instead of numbers. So in the last two examples we saw 70 out of 100 mosquitoes, 32 um, or more out of 120. Um, and that's why we used what we did then. This time around we have percentages instead of the numbers. And so this is what the example, what uh, the example that I've chosen. Now this came from um, the ninth edition of Brace's book, and this is from section 7.2 of um, the ninth edition book, and it's one of the exercises. It says courts sometimes make mistakes, but which do you believe is worse mistake: convicting an innocent person or letting a guilty person go free? It turns out that 60% of all Americans believe that convicting an innocent person is wor the worst mistake. Suppose you're taking a sociology class with 30 students enrolled. The question discussed today is, do you agree with the statement that convicting an innocent person is worse than letting the guilty person go free? 
what's the probability that the proportion of the students in the class who agree is at least half, at least two-thirds, no more than a third. So what we're doing here is we're looking at half, thirds, two-thirds, one-third. Um, and these are percentages or proportions. Remember, they're percentages of proportion. So decimals, percentages, proportions. Now we could change those into numbers by multiplying them by n, but there's no need to. We can simply go ahead and do our um, problem based upon what we've been asked. So I'm still going to sit here and I'm going to say, okay, well, what's my n? Well, the n is the 30 students that are enrolled. What's my p? Well, my p is the proportion of all Americans that um, think that it's worse to let an innocent person uh, convict an innocent person. And we can see that n times p is greater than 5. n times q would be greater than 5 as well. And um, so we, we definitely have the binomial conditions met. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to say, oh, well, this, um, the p hats, right, the proportions and samples, they're going to be normally distributed with this same p and with a standard deviation equal to the p times the q and that divided by n. So what I want to do is I want to find out what the square root of p times q divided by n is. So this is going to be 0.4 times 0.6 and then divided by my n which is 30 and then I'm going to take the root of that. So that value is going to be what's going to give me my um, my standard deviation. So let me calculate that really quickly and find out what value it is. So that is um, the square root of 0.0 0, 0.08 and the square root of 0 0.008 is approximately 0 0.089442 so 4 4 and we'll round that to 3 so that's approximately what we can use there so our first probability in A here says that what's the probability that this um, p hat is at least so greater than or equal to half. Well, half I'm going to represent with 0.5. So this time around, what I have is the probability that we have um, p hat minus p divided by the square root of n and p, um, oops, p and q, sorry is q, p, and that's the end down there, is greater than or equal to, and this has to be corrected this time for a continuity correction still, but this time I'm going to say greater than or equal to, so I want to include it, so I'm going to subtract, and my 0.5 this time gets divided by the sample size 30. So this is going to look like 0.5 divided by 30, and then I'm going to subtract that value from 0.5. And so the value that I'm going to end up using here is 0.48333333333. Um, so I'll just put 0.483 with a bar over it. And then I'm going to subtract my mean, which is 0.6. And then I'm going to divide this by my 0 0.089 and then 4443. Um, so what you need to notice is that continuity correction did not go away here. I still had that continuity correction. It was just that my continuity correction this time um, is going to have to be the 0 0.5 that we're used to divided by the 30. So now what I have, let's see, let me subtract 0.6 from this and divide by 0 0.089443 and I get negative 1.30. So this is a negative 1.30. So being greater than or equal to negative 1.30 is the same as being um, less than... Uh, 1 minus the probability of being less than that. So if I were going to look this up in my um, z negative z table, I would have to do it in this manner. 
So I would have to do 1 and then minus, and then let's go find my z table. Um, so negative 1 is 3, so 1, 3, and then 0. So 1, 3, 0, we get 0 0.0968. So point zero nine six eight. And so that probability gives me point nine, oops, point nine zero three two, I believe it is. And then let's go and take a look at what I do if I wanted to put it in my calculator. So I do normal CDF and I would go with and Again, I have to go and look at this. I have um, greater than or equal to negative 1.30. So I'm starting at negative 1.3 and I'm going off to infinity. And so I put that in and then I would return if I'm on the old operating system or I would go through and I put the zero and the one in on the new operating system. So normal CDF and negative 1.3 e to the 10th and then paste that in and I get 0 0.9031999 and 4. So rounded to four significant digits we would have 9032, the exact same probability that we have here. All right, now let's go back to my um, next one and let's look at this probability. So in part B, the probability here says the probability that x is at least two-thirds. So at least, so that's greater than or equal to, and two-thirds is represented by 0.67. So again, I'm still going to be going um, from the left side, so I'm going to still subtract 0.5 divided by, and then I'm dividing by the 30 again, and that's going to give me my um, p hats. Sorry, these shouldn't be those. Those should be um, p sub b's. And so this is now going to be the probability that my p sub hat, which has continuity correction, is going to be equal, greater than or equal to, and then the number. So that's what we're looking at here. Now if I want to go for the no more than, the no more than here is going to be, this is the most it's going to be, right? So no more than this. So less than or equal to one third. So this one's 0.33 rounded that way. Now this bar, the 0.33, I'm going to be including it. So I'm going to be adding 0.5 divided by 30 in this particular case. Now I assigned one homework problem um, this go around this semester, which it's the spring of 13, um, to give you a one single problem that you would have to do a continuity correction using the sampling distribution. And you can get away with not doing it by just multiplying by the sample size and doing it like you would the other ones. But I did want to show you this. Now I don't have time in my video because I only have a little bit of time left to finish these out, but you might want to finish all of these problems out on your own and just make sure that they're correct. I'm going to pause and I'm going to finish the and get the answers and then I'll write the answers in. All right, just in case um, you were interested, this is the real shorthand notation for the calculations here, the continuity correction leading to this, then the z-score, which is this and the probability associated with that via table. Again, um, p hats, and then there's the probability, uh, normal um, continuity correction, adding the 0.5 divided by 30, and then the z-score, and then the table association. All right, that ends this one.